And what a joy that is, for, not only for me, and that I've been, been in their lives for the last four years, for their entire span of high school, but for Pastor, who's literally, I'll, I'll bet, Riley, did Pastor baptize you? It, no, he didn't? He did it at vacation Bible school. Oh, okay, well, it's fine. He was in the, but... Yeah, I mean, you know, the the baptizing, yeah, see, and, and there's something about just seeing the young people grow up. Not only that, you know what they've been taught. You know what they've been given. And so without hesitation, we can send these young people into the next area of their lives knowing that they've been taught right and that they know good and they know what it, it's going to take in order to maintain that. And so I'm grateful for that. Tonight's uh, sermon is, is really, I, I begin to ask God, I said, Lord, you know, what would you like me to talk about? What would you like me to speak about? And I just felt like this song kept coming back to me. And it was by a band. They were, they were in the 90s, early 2000s, and their, their name was Creed. And, and the song that just kept coming to my mind, and I'm like, God, I don't, why do you want me to talk about that? But the simple as this, what's this life for? And it was like these words just kept echoing in my mind and echoing in my mind. And I said, okay, God, I'll talk about it. You know, what direction do you want me to go? And so I began to ask him. And I believe he gave me some things to give, not only to our young people getting ready to go into the next area of their life, but for anybody that's living a life to be like Christ. These things apply. And that's what you always want to do. You want to, you want to be able to give people something that they can apply to their lives. Amen. Lord, I love you and I thank you. I'm grateful for tonight. Not only the, for the fact that I get to share your word, Lord, but I get to do it with people I love. This house is a house that I love dearly and I'm grateful for. Lord, I pray that you would bless our pastor as he's in Alabama with his mom. Lord, we never know. This could be the last time. This could be the hundredth from the last time. But either way, Lord, let us to treat every opportunity like it's the last time so that we can absorb and take in everything that you've got for us, Lord. Every opportunity would be taken advantage of that, Lord, they wouldn't just pass us by. Or let, it, let me to leave a word for these young people and for anybody listening, words that would just echo for eternity in their lives. I love you and I thank you. I pray that you would bless me tonight to share your word. Let me to do so accurately and let me to do so precisely. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. As always, I want to give honor to my pastor. I love that man. I'm grateful for the opportunity to be able to preach. I'm grateful for the opportunity to teach um, and to give me a place to do so. Uh, our pastor is a man that loves you guys. And, and part of the reason it's hard for him to go home is because he... He doesn't like to separate himself from you guys. And so I, I bless you tonight, Pastor, if you're watching. Um, he texted me before, and uh, I, just, I just bless you. I'm grateful for you. I'm grateful for the opportunity you've given me. Tonight, I want, I want to start off in 2 Timothy 4, 1 through 5. And listen, this isn't on the overhead, so don't freak out, Miss Cheryl. I purposely did that. I just want everybody to listen to these scriptures, because not only is it today more so it will be tomorrow for Kayla, for Reedon, for Riley. Uh, more so it will be for you guys and even more so for my kids. Second uh, Timothy 4, 1 through 5 in the NLT simply says this. I solemnly urge you in the presence of God and Christ Jesus who will someday judge the living and the dead when he comes to set up his kingdom. Again, his kingdom. Preach the word of God. So many times we mistake those words to believe that that's from my mouth. The greatest sermon I'll ever preach is through my life, not through my mouth. So young people, as you get ready to go to the next area of your life, you don't always have to win people with the things you say, but your actions will always speak louder than any words you ever speak. Be prepared, whether it's in time, is favorable or not. Patiently correct, rebuke, and encourage your people with good teachings. For a time is coming when people will no longer listen to sound and wholesome teaching. They will follow their own desires and they will look for teachers 
who will tell them whatever their itching ears want to hear. They will reject the truth and chase after myths. But you should, you should keep a clear mind in every situation. Don't be afraid of suffering for the Lord. Work at telling others the good news and fully carry out the ministry God has given to you. Everybody has been given a ministry in Christ. Every single person in here. You do not have to have a pulpit. Your pulpit is your life. Your pulpit is your influence. The greatest. I've always said this. You don't have to affect the world. You just have to affect your world. As long as you're affecting your world. And I'm affecting my world. The world is being changed. So we need to remember that. And so many times we feel like, oh, well, I, I don't have a platform. And I don't. Yes, you do. You have a friend. You have a dad. You have a mom. You have a brother. You have a sister. Anybody you come into contact with is your platform, is your world of influence, is your sphere of influence. And you are the only one that can control what that sphere looks like. So I urge you. I encourage you. Change your world. It's you're the only one that can. Amen. So what's this life for? My first thought is this. It's meant to be endured. This is, this is not an easy sermon uh, to take at times. Whenever you talk about endurance, it's like most people are like, <laughs> I don't want to hear that. I don't want endurance. That's hard stuff. I don't want to, I don't want to endure. I want, I want everything to be roses. I want everything to be good. It says, it says that in, in, James, if I can put my papers here. James 2, 1 through 2, uh, 1, 2 through 4, and also verse 12. It says this. Dear brothers and sisters, when trouble of any times comes your way, consider it an opportunity for great joy. For you know that when your faith is tested, your endurance has a chance to grow. When your faith is tested, your endurance has a chance to grow. So let it grow, for when your endurance is fully developed, you will be perfect and complete, needing nothing. God blesses those who patiently endure testing and temptation, for afterward they will receive the crown of life that God has promised to those who love him. It's important to love our king, amen? That's James 1, 2 through 4, also verse 12. It says, these trials will show you that your faith is genuine. It is being tested as fire tests and purifies gold. Though your faith is far more precious than mere gold. So when your faith remains strong through many trials. Listen, the only way you will ever be strengthened in life. The only way is through trials. The good times never made strong people. <laughs> Amen. It was always those hard times. It was always those times of pounding. It was always those times of, of your parents saying, you can't do that. You can't do that. And eventually me catching it after they hit me for the 5,000th time. Like, oh, yeah. Wait, I can't do that. <laughs> Sometimes there has to be a, a, a punishment in order for us to learn. I pray that you can learn by watching others being punished. But. The truth is, some of us have to learn the hard way. It says, uh, that's, that's 1 Peter 1 through 7. Uh, guys, we, we have to continue in this thing. This is a day-by-day -day thing. It says, so we remain strong through many trials. It will bring you much praise and glory and honor on the day when Jesus Christ is revealed to the whole world. So how do I cause glory not only to my king but to myself as I endure we were created to be beings that endure hardship without them like I said we never get stronger we never we never get to the place of maturity that our king is calling us to until we face a little bit of hardship in life that's not an easy easy thing to preach it, it's easier to preach than live I can promise you that because those days of hardship are coming. I'm not going to blow smoke today. The truth is, you, you've been in high school this far. Life is getting ready to get a lot more real 
responsibilities are getting ready to actually stack on your shoulders a little bit. Uh, you having to make your own choices is getting ready to happen. And how you choose to make those choices is going to directly affect your tomorrow. Because my tomorrow lies in my today. Whether I want my good tomorrow or I want my bad tomorrow, it lies in my today. I make those choices now that will directly affect my tomorrow. We were created to worship. This is a huge deal for me. Uh, worship should be something that just pours from our lives. Uh, our king is good. God is good. Irregardless of our situations, God is good. And so I want you to remember that. So in Romans 12, 1 through 2, it says, And so, dear brothers and sisters, I plead with you to give your bodies to God because of all he has done for you. Listen, if the only thing he ever did, if the only thing you could ever recognize God doing for you is the fact that he created you, the fact that he sent his son to die for you, that's enough. But yet he still continues to pour out his love and show you the way. So it says let your bodies to God. Because of all he has done for you. Let them be a living and holy sacrifice. The kind he will find acceptable. This is true worship to him. Do not conform to the patterns of this world. But be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve. That God's will is. And it is good and pleasing and perfect. So God's purpose for your life is that you find his perfect will. Will you every time? No. You're going to miss it sometimes. We all have. Every person in this room has missed the perfect will of God in their life. That does not mean that it disqualifies me from continuing to try to find his perfect will for my life. Amen. We got to keep getting up. But if I want to know what God wants for my life, then I worship him with my life. Listen. Worship is not a song. You can get up here and, and praise all day long. That's not to say that you're not giving God worship in that moment. But God requires a lot more than cheap lip service to worship him. Worship is meant to be a lifestyle. This thing has to be lived out every single day. It's more than praise. And why I say that is because praise is the cheapest form of worship you can give God. It didn't cost me anything to come in here and sing a couple songs. It cost me a little bit of time. But the truth is my life is what God is looking for. That is the true and acceptable worship before the king. And if we're not careful, we cheapen worship to say, oh, I worship God today. That's good, but he says to worship me in spirit and in truth. How do I do that? I live it every single day. Not meant for selfish gain. I put Solomon in, in, in quotation marks here because Solomon understood this better, I think, than any person on earth. God gave him the opportunity to have anything he wanted, anything. God said, what do you want? I will give it to you. Anything you ask for. He could have asked for all the money in the world. He could have asked for all the women in the world. He could have asked for anything he wanted at that time. And God said he would give it to him. But instead, he understood. He said, I want wisdom that I could lead your people the right way. And in doing so, the king looked at him and said, Oh, son, you don't know what you just asked for. He said, because you've asked rightly. Because you sought wisdom instead of the things of the world. I'm getting ready to overflow your life like you've never been overflowed. You were a king's son. So you knew what overflow was. But you ain't never tasted like what I'm getting ready to give to you. Because you've asked rightly. I say ask rightly to the king. Because he will bless you. He will overflow your life. Now it's not always in, in, in Johnny Manziel. Okay. It's not always in the money. God can overflow your life in so many ways. He's overflowed my life by giving me an incredible wife, by giving me three incredible kids, by giving me a job that I love. He can overflow and satisfy your life in ways that you could never imagine, even with the simplest things. Amen. And so I put this. It says, then he said, beware, guard against every kind of greed. 
Life is not measured by how much you own. Therefore, he told them a story. A rich man had a fertile farm that produced fine crops. He said to himself, what should I do? He says, I don't have room for all the crops. He said, then he said, I know. I'll tear down my old barns and I'll build bigger ones. Then I'll have room enough to store all my wheat and my other goods. Then I'll sit back and say to myself, my friend, you have enough stored away for years to come. Now take it easy. Eat, drink, and be merry. But God said to him, you fool, you will die this very night. Then who will get everything you worked for? Yes, a person is a fool to store up earthly wealth, but not have a rich relationship with God. <laughs> that right there is convicting, even to the, to the poorest, to the richest. The fact that God is saying, look, all this earthly stuff, it's going away. You cannot take it with you when you go. You can look back in every coffin, every hieroglyphic filled Egyptian tomb. All that stuff's still there, except for the stuff other people stole out of there. <laughs> Listen, you can't take it with you when you go. I love what pastor says. I'm going to give it away before I go. Man, I try my best to give all my stuff away now. Why? Because who cares? It's just stuff. I mean, yeah, it's nice. Don't get me wrong. I, I like stuff just like the rest of y'all. <laughs> We're Americans. We can't help it. But the truth is, man, my riches and my longing can't be for stuff. It needs to be for him. And when we put that treasure first, then all that other stuff starts to look right and be good. So in Matthew 6, 33 through 34, it says, But seek first the kingdom and its righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. As well. That's what, that's what we need to look at. All these things will be given to you as well. Why was it given to Solomon? Because he sought God's wisdom and he sought God first. That was the apple of his eye. So all that other stuff, that came natural. Daddy, just like all of us with a kid, when our kid is doing right, man, I mean, you got my wallet, you got my love, you got whatever you want. When JJ's acting right, Daddy, can I have a dollar? Here's 10. <laughs> That's what our Father in Heaven wants to do to us, too. But our heart has to be in the right place. Our mind has to be saying, God, I'm not doing this to get. I'm doing this to give. I'm doing this to let you know, Daddy, you're everything I could ever want. You're Daddy, you're everything I could ever need. That's what God's waiting for, for a people that will say, Lord, you are my number one. Be intentional. You were made with a purpose. Listen, ain't nobody in here an accident. If anybody in here could say they were an accident, it would be me. Um, my mom had 12 abortions before they had me. My mom went into prostitution right after she had me. If anybody could say, man, I was an accident. Listen, I could tell you I was an accident. But I can also tell you that God put me on this earth. I had to go into an orphanage and end up in Northern California, born in Escondido, Southern California, end up in Northern California so that I could get to the place that he's calling to me right now. The avenue he gets you there does not matter. The attitude in which you have that you're going on that avenue completely matters to you and to the people you're going to affect. You have to be intentional. And we know that God caused everything to work together for the good of those who love him and are called according to the purpose for him. Your purpose is for God, first and foremost. My purpose lies in the king. Whether I sit behind a pulpit, whether I sit behind a desk, whether I sit on a bass boat, my purpose is for the king. That's why I was created, to fulfill his call on my life. Romans 8, 28. That was Romans 8, 28. It says, and now this is another verse. So let the, let's not grow weary of doing good. At just the right time, we will reap a harvest of blessing. If we don't give up, therefore, whenever we have the opportunity, we should do good to everyone, especially to the household of faith. If it's in your ability, bless the people around you, good or bad. That's the reality. I be loved no matter what. Galatians, that was Galatians 6, 9 through 10. 
1 Samuel 16, 7, it says, But the Lord said to Samuel, Do not judge by his appearance or his height, for I have rejected him. The Lord does not see things the way you see them. Sometimes we judge books by their cover. And the Lord's saying, You don't see what I see. You see right now, I see 30 years in the future. We have the inability to do that. But God always has the ability to say, you don't understand what I put inside of that young man, what I put inside of that young woman. So don't judge according to the appearance or the height, for I have rejected him. The Lord does not see the things that you see the way you see it. People judge by the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. He knows what the pure intentions are in your life. Why am I asking for wisdom? Am I asking for wisdom because I saw it work in Samson, uh, Solomon's life? Or am I asking for wisdom because I want to rightly judge? Am I asking for wisdom because I want to fulfill his purposes on my life? Salt and light. We were created to be salt and light in our generation, in our world, for the people we come in contact with. Everybody's heard this verse. You are the salt of the earth. But what good is salt if it has lost its flavor? Can you make it salty again? No. It will be thrown out and trampled underfoot as worthless. You are the light of the world. Like a city on a hilltop that cannot be hidden. No one lights a lamp and then puts it out or puts it under a basket. Instead, a lamp is placed on a high place. It will give light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your good deeds shine out. For all to see so that everyone will praise your heavenly father. Listen, this is so important. There isn't a place on the planet so dark that light can't shine. Never happened. In the darkest places, light shines the brightest. Let, let the lights go off for about five minutes. Close your eyes. Then flip the lights on. Close your uh, uh, your eyes start to hurt. Why? Because that light is extremely bright. Because I've seen only darkness. So let your lives be light. Salt. Salt is not affected by other chemicals in the world. Salt only affects the chemicals or anything it touches. You've never heard anybody say, man, that meat, or man, that salty is meat. Never. Why? Because salt affects everything it touches. You would not, <laughs> you wouldn't say, man, that, that, that salt is very spaghetti. No, but let salt get poured on that spaghetti. You might, <laughs> that is some salty spaghetti right there. Why? Because salt affects every single thing it touches. Whether it's metal, whether it's your car, whether it, it does not matter. Salt affects everything it touches so should you i'm gonna leave you guys with this is that there isn't a place dark enough yeah we know that we, light is always shining solomon gave me some uh joe you can come up i'm gonna have you help me out anyway baby you can come up um solomon left us with some some really really uh just interesting thoughts here uh this is ecclesiastes 12 12 through 14, it says, But my child, let me give you some further advice. Be careful, for writing books is endless, and much study will wear you out. Listen, where you're going, whether it be college, whether it be a new job, it does not matter. You're always going to be learning. And, and sometimes that learning will wear you out. Sometimes that learning will cause you to just scratch your head. And, oh, this is not easy. But he said this. That's the whole story. Here now is my final conclusion. Fear God and obey His commands. For this is everyone's duty. Every single person on this earth was called to obey God. Whether you know Him or not, whether you want to know Him or not, you are still called to obey God's command. For this is everyone's duty. God will judge us for everything we do, including every secret thing, whether they're good or or bad guys I, I Paul in the very beginning he said I I charge you Timothy I charge you 
And why did he say that? Or I solemnly urge you. Why? Because he's telling you, take note, Timothy. You're getting ready to have a ministry that's going to be one of the largest ministries recorded at the time. They even believe that Jesus' mother probably went to Timothy's church. This young man had, had it going on. And he was young. And so Paul was saying, dude, that's all good. People are going to say things to you that shouldn't be said. People are going to do things to you that shouldn't be done. But the big thing is, keep your attitude right. Obey the Lord. And when you do those things, all those things you're hoping for, all those dreams you're striving for, uh, it doesn't matter. He's going to make a way. And, and the Bible, it talks about he'll make a way in the desert where there seems to be no way. I pray that over all of you. That even at times when it seems like there is no way, listen, you serve a way maker. You serve a God that's big enough to make a way, to open a door, to let you meet the right person at the right time with the right connections. He's just one knot away from your life changing forever. And that's whether you're a senior in high school or you're a, a baby or you're 50 years old. One nod from God and your life changes forever. So I pray for you guys. Lord, I love you. I thank you. I'm so grateful for tonight. I'm thankful for every person in here. I'm thankful for everybody on the internet that as they listen to this tonight, yes, it may have been directed toward the seniors of the little country church here in Crosby, but Lord, it was for everybody. Why? Because it was your word. And we know when your word is spoken, lives can be set free. Opportunities can come to pass that didn't come to pass. That Lord, illumination can happen. Revelation can happen. Wisdom can begin to stir in our hearts so that we can apply that wisdom and allow our lives to look more like you. I pray for each and every one of them that as they step forth into the next places of their lives, that, Lord, you'll meet them with arms wide open. That, Lord, you would meet them with, with them realizing, God, you've got me. And the good, the bad, the ugly, when they mess up or when they're perfect, Lord, you still got them. You still love them like they're your own because they are. They were bought and then they were redeemed. They were bought again. You made them and then you bought them. They're twice yours, my king. I thank you for every life in here. I pray that you would just continue to give us wisdom in every aspect of our lives because we know your Holy Spirit gives wisdom freely if we just ask for it. Let us ask for your wisdom, Lord, in everything we do. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. At this time, I'd like to bring our seniors forward.